Hey guys, my name is Shai and I am here in the aftermath of the full moon, blood moon, Scorpio, lunar eclipse. Oh boy. So where to begin? I guess I just want to say that all last week, <laughs> The one overarching theme that I saw literally everywhere with everyone I talked to was an incredibly deep cleanse of something, right? This played out differently for everybody. Some people literally physically cleaned a part of their body that they don't normally look at or a part of their house that they don't normally clean, doing deep cleanings that way. Um, other people, this was releasing astral parasites that have been embedded. Um, for some people, this has been um, really even like becoming aware of and then releasing different types of influences that have been, I don't want to say mind control, but it might have felt like that way sometimes, right? Um, different types of influences that, that have been influencing their mind and emotions, their thoughts and emotions and reactions. Um, even on some level that we have been releasing galactic implants <laughs> um like for some people this has gone really dark um this is releasing deep 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 held some conscious beliefs and thought systems it's like it doesn't matter how it played out for you oh, i can guarantee you that you are now um like freer more clear I would even use the word more pure um, than than you have ever been in this lifetime. It was like a massive, massive release and it was not pleasant for most of us. I myself um, got really, last Tuesday, um, I got incredibly sick as I was going through a deep purge of different types of things that were interfering with me on the level of my consciousness, right? I, I like, and I got physically sick as I was purging that, but then um, I was lucky enough that I kind of got through that eclipse purge several days early. <laughs> um, so I've been feeling really good for the past few days, just feeling completely fresh and clear, feeling like all of these things that were influencing me are no longer influencing me and I am I feel free to tune back into my soul and once again it is becoming much more clear to me um what like it's like I can now look at my my behavior my thoughts my feelings and my reactions and go those thoughts feelings and reactions those were never really in alignment with my soul they were not coming from my soul they were not influenced from my soul those things were coming from somewhere else something that i don't want to be influenced by doesn't matter what it is really it's just something i didn't want to be influenced by and now it's i can recognize it for what it is and it's no longer influencing me because i have released it and now i can it, it, i finding in the last few days is so much easier just to tune into like what is my soul feel about this what does my soul think about this how would my soul react to this it's like i feel so much more aligned with my own soul than ever before even though i have been through these kind of clearing and purging cycles before this time it's it's even deeper and more profound and it, it's obviously the most recent one so i'm really enjoying it so that's where we are at and don't get me wrong if you're if you're not feeling completely fresh and brand new right now if you're still integrating if you're still feeling like in the chaos in the mess um in the struggle that's perfectly fine um you're doing this exactly as you're supposed to and i will say that um the rest of this week is going to be a deep integration process and it's specifically leading up to the sun trine pluto on the 19th on thursday friday so So having one more encounter with Scorpio energy, I mean, of course, Pluto's in Capricorn, but whenever Pluto is involved, that's that's this run in with Scorpio energy. The sun is going to be trining Pluto. And that is a really, I feel like that is a really useful and benevolent aspect to Pluto. And so for those of you who are still like purging and releasing, um, that is the Pluto is going to come along to like to like really give you the push or the pull that the stuff needs to strip away from you it's this um completion of this transformation cycle and then the sun is going to be moving into Gemini and that is I really feel that Gemini season coming up at the end of this week is is really giving us all an opportunity for a 
not only a break, but a fresh start, like a fresh start, but the fresh start begins with a break. It's almost like the idea of taking a gap year, you know, between high school and college, taking a gap year. I think Gemini season, if we can truly, truly, truly um, release whatever has been influencing you that is not your soul. So that's what we've been doing with it with these last two eclipses, right? And that's what we're going to finish up doing at the beginning of this week, releasing any influences that are not literally your own soul or source itself and then if you can truly capture that truly capture that and just be like okay for the next month for all of gemini season i am just going to be my own soul i am just going to radiate my own soul and i am not going to think feel or react in any ways that are not truly in alignment with my own soul. If that's where you can get yourself, then Gemini season is going to be a break and a fresh start. It's going to be like, yeah, <laughs> I picked up a deck of cards and the card that just fell out was the seven of cups. So this is kind of like a choice that you have to make. You have to, um, I mean, it's not like you have to, <laughs> right? But it's if you, if you really want to tune into this frequency of a new fresh start and, and having a bit of a break for a bit, like an energetic break, this is a choice for you to make. And this is going to be a recurring theme coming up for basically the duration, <laughs> the duration, I, I could just say and put a period there because we have more freedom of choice than ever before and as we align more with our own souls than we have ever in this life before um that actually opens us up to like more choices right more choices which means we can freely choose to align with something that is not our own soul or we can freely choose to align with our own soul and it actually kind of requires that we make the choice because that's how much free will we have, right? That is how much free will we have. We have the choice to like do it or don't do it. You have the choice to do literally whatever it is that you want. You have the choice to align with literally whatever it is that you want. You have the choice to, you know, I have this word obey, like obedience coming up in my mind over the last few days over the course of this eclipse, which is really interesting because I don't typically have ever in my life really valued obedience or thought much about it, right? <laughs> it's, I'm, I've always been one of those people who's like, do what you got to do, do what you want to do. And that's basically that. Like, I'm, I'm not, I don't think about obedience as a, as a virtue, right? But so why is this word obedience coming up for me? It is, um, cause it's like, it's been encouraging me to think about what have I been obeying? Have I been obeying my own soul? Cause I realized, well, I like to think that I'm not obeying anybody, right? But whenever I think, feel or react, I am obeying something like, right? It's some kind of impulse, something encouraged me to think, feel or react in that way. So was I obeying something that was influencing my mind in a way that is not perfectly enjoyable to me or was I obeying my own soul? So this is, it's the phrase that comes to mind is like the soul obedience return, the soul obedience return. And you can choose, we can all choose to obey our own souls or we can choose to like follow something else. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at. And the thing is, I know, um, there's a tricky thing because if something has been influencing you, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's social conditioning, if it's just the quirks of your human mind, if it's some kind of, um, like even some kind of technology, some kind of implant, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter how this is, how you're resonating with this, right? It really doesn't matter. If something has been influencing you to follow it instead of your own soul, you basically, we've all developed habits, right? We've developed habits of thought. We've developed habits of emotion and habits of reaction. And those habits die hard. They are hard to break, right? So imagine that something has been influencing you to feel guilty or something has been influencing you to want to know like exact steps right? To want to know exact steps of what to do. Maybe something has been influencing you to feel guilty or something has been influencing you to want to know an exact procedure about how to move forward or something has been influencing you to make you feel like you need to ask the opinions of others, right? It doesn't matter how you've been influenced, right? But that is an ingrained habit. And at some point we have to look at that habit and go, that is not a habit that's coming from my soul. I just have to not do that, right? And so that's obviously extremely difficult. It's like no one is saying this is easy, right? No one is saying this is easy. If you have a habit of feeling guilty, it's going to take like some rehabilitation in your own habits in order to stop engaging in that feeling of guilt. And if um, 
you know, your mind has been telling you your whole life that you need to have a precise procedure in order to succeed at something or in order to move forward, that's going to be extremely difficult to let go of the need for a procedure or the need for control, right? For me, this has been over the last few years, it's really been releasing the need for control. I am a recovering control freak, as I've said before, and I want to be in control of everything in, in my environment, right? Or at least, you know, I used to want to. And it's really, really hard to let go of control because when you're when your your mind and your body has this habit of control, how, how do you like, it's so hard to break out of that, right? Because you have to just adopt an entirely new way of being because you might think, like say say if your, your habit is wanting a procedure, wanting a procedure, wanting precise steps on how to do something, and then you go, okay, how am I gonna drop out of wanting a precise procedure of next steps? And then your mind is immediately going to try to come up with a series of steps to stop coming up with a series of steps. And it's like, that's, <laughs> as you can see, that's a loop, right? That's a loop. So there is this, um, there's this thing that can happen where you start looping, um, like looping the old thought habits. Um, and they just, cause they're just they're, like, they're stuck, right? They're, these are really hard habits that are stuck in your system. And, ah, it's like just, got to shift out and <laughs> it's really difficult to describe how to shift out right how to shift out because again it, it's like it's it's literally just following your own soul following your own soul obeying your own soul the soul obedience return and i don't really i don't know how to describe how to do that <laughs> like with, with words right because it really it it's one of those things that truly does defy like English language because it's something that is between you and your own soul and and everyone it's going to be different for everyone and it's not a thing of the human mind and it's not a thing of linearity so English is this linear language and it's just not really going to work right I can't give precise steps on how to like release these things so it's it's just tuning into your own soul and tuning into your own feelings and tuning inward tuning inward tuning inward and as i'm saying that i'm looking at um on the 17th mars is going to conjunct neptune ace of swords <laughs> yeah and i was getting a feeling like mars conjunct neptune that is going to give like i mean mars is not particularly happy in pisces right this is mars conjunct neptune in pisces but i think with mars conjuncting neptune in pisces it's it to me it feels like it's gonna give give you like the impetus to act like internally the impetus to act like spiritually and mystically it's gonna like help you have that kind of inner fortitude inner spark inner strength to kind of get an intuition to kind of get a sense on how to just tune into your own consciousness how to just tune into your own soul so mars is coming through to kind of give us a little bit of a push for all of this like final integration um and release of you know everything that anybody might still be integrating and releasing from all of this mess right and like I was already saying, with the sun trying Pluto, that is Pluto coming through really benevolently, really benevolently to help you strip away any final, um, I mean, it'll depend, right? It'll depend where you are in this process. If you're still like stripping away, stripping away and releasing these types of, um, these influences, whatever they are for you, Pluto is going to come away on, uh, come around on Thursday to like really help pull the final dregs of that aside. Um, if you're more in the integrating process, this is going to start really to propel you forward and help you like, clinch the integration and, and push you moving forward you'll start getting ideas about how to how to be how to how to how to how to obey your own soul right how to move forward and if you are already feeling pretty good and pretty integrated on all of this the sun trine pluto is going to propel you up to an entirely new level it's like the, the next leveling up yeah <laughs> the world right the world and with potential here to connect you you know to connect you to everything to connect you to the cosmos to connect you to like the network of souls, right? The network of souls. It's actually something, this is, I'm thinking of something that, you know, in my own, my own mind, just to myself, I call it the starseed network, the starseed network, because I've had a few experiences of kind of like popping out of my body and it feels like popping up into my soul star chakra. And I see, um, I like become this like orb of blue light and then like just outside of my body, I'm typically still aware of my body, but like I've kind of popped up and out. And then when I kind of, you know, look around, so to speak, I see, like blue lights streaming out from my blue, like blue rays, right? Blue rays, blue streams coming out of my own ball of blue light. And I can see all of these like thousands of other 
um, nodes of blue light all throughout this entire network. And I know that those are like the star seeds that are on Earth, right? This is this is us. This is like our collective, right? Everyone is out there, um, and we and we can connect. And I can feel pulses. Is this is like this is this is how I know like how connected we all are. Like so like so deeply connected. <laughs> so 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 deeply connected because on our, on our you know we feel like in our human bodies we're all running around completely separated, but really like we're we're not at all. It's just literally one layer up, one layer up in our consciousness just right above our bodies we are so closely connected we are like just like a like a chain we're a network we're, we're like a fishnet we're, we're all so connected and constantly sharing energy all the time all the time all the time like so connected and that um you know for anyone who kind of is ready for that on Thursday with the Sun Trine Pluto, that is going to be available uh, for you to tune into. I mean, it's available for everyone to tune into, but you know, if you're still um, working on your own releasing process, then you know, you're going to be focusing on that. Okay, and then moving into Gemini season. I fucking love Gemini season, guys. I mean, I'm a Gemini moon, so to me, it's very comfortable, very homey. Um, what I will say about Gemini energy is that for some people, it can be kind of anxiety inducing because it's really like fast, rapid air, mental thought energy, right? It's like, um, so, you know, if you, if you don't have a lot of air energy in your chart, I would say, if you're not like a really air person, um, you could feel it is a kind of like this, like, a shake up to your mental body and it can be a little anxiety inducing, but um, it's really, really cool to me because, you know, I've been talking so much about releasing all these influences on your mind, right? We've just, just, we just did it. We just had this massive release of all these influences on our mind. And now we're moving into Gemini season, which, you know, we could call it or think of it as the, the season of the mind, right? The season of the, of the mind, but your mind is freshly clear. So to me, that is incredibly significant right? It's incredibly significant to have this clearing of the mind moving into Gemini season because that's how we have this opportunity for a fresh start. And here, here we come up again with the two of swords. And this is up to you. How do you, how do you want to, how do you want to experience Gemini season? Really? I would like, I would really invite you. Like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do this myself. I'm really, really, really setting a very specific intention for Gemini season to like, to do, to only focus on like soul obedience, right? Soul obedience. That's the way I am feeling the wording of it, right? But frame it however you want. What is your intention for Gemini season? How do you want to experience it? Do you want to have this fresh new start? Do you want to completely drop out of anything that has been influencing you that is not your own soul, right? What do you want to do? What, what's your intention for Gemini season? Because it's a choice, right? It's a choice. It's a choice. Which way do you want to go? Which way do you want to go? You could spiral down into more shadow work, but I, I'm not intending that for any of you guys. I want, I want all of us to be lifted up and out of the muck, right? Up and out of the muck and into the light and into the air, into the freshness of a new beginning. That's what I, that's what I hope for everyone who wants that, right? For any, maybe you don't want that, but, <laughs> but if you do want that, then that is what I want for you. And that is what I intend for you because, <sighs> yeah, three of pentacles. It's this, this is what I was feeling. This is this teamwork, right? This teamwork. This is here. Here we are all connected in this network. Here we are all connected in this network. The more people we have rising up into this fresh new beginning, the the more we're actually empowering the starseed network, right? Because uh, I I just have this this nagging feeling that this is such a good opportune moment for star seeds to be rising above like galactic trauma <laughs> rising above galactic trauma because it's like at some point you know and you can you can hear how this is all influenced by the scorpio eclipse right it's it's time to leave that in the past it's time to leave that in the past i know be, because we've all had so much like <laughs> so much right so much has happened on a galactic level um but it's really time to just be leaving that in the past and rising above it right if you feel like you can if you feel like you can of course if that if you're not ready for that then there's always the opportunity for like another loop of shadow work you can always loop through another loop of shadow work and what if you want it has to be what is right for you and what is in your perfect divine timing but i feel like for myself and for at least a group of people who resonate with me that for us it's this is a perfect opportunity to spiral up out of all of that and to Spiral into some kind of new beginning, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the chariot, right? The chariot. Spiraling up into a new beginning. Look at this chariot has literally left the ground. She is flying. She is flying through the air. That That is what this is about. 
like like launching onwards and upwards and forwards into a brand new soul spiral, a brand new soul spiral, spiral right? We've been so much focused on working through the past and doing the shadow work and doing the release and doing the inner work and blah, 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 blah. Uh, with this Gemini season, it's like, I just, I so intend it to be a fresh new spiral of onwards and upwards. And so, and then on Saturday, Mercury's, uh, what's happening here? Oh yeah, the sun is also going to be conjunct Mercury because Mercury is just inside of Gemini. So the sun's going to move into Gemini, then it's going to conjunct with Mercury, um, which is again, right? Because when sun, Mercury conjunct, it's kind of like the new moon for Mercury, which is like the new moon for your mind. So that is again, 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 another reset to the mind. And this is also while Mercury is retrograde and then Mercury is going to retrograde back into Taurus. Um completing like completing this whole reset right it, it's really profound the level of reset to your mind that that is available for you right now to tune into and to choose is like <laughs> rising above it all right seven of wands rising above it all and this is the feeling i get when it, it's like these wands down here these things that could be kind of like you could feel like they're fighting you, right? And you're rising above them. These are like the habits, the habits of the thought habits, the thought patterns, the emotional reactions that you are used to, that you've been playing out for most of your life. That's what you're rising above, right? But you actually, you actually have to like choose to do it. <laughs> you actually have to choose to do it because it, it's this whole thing of um, how to articulate, how to articulate. I feel like different types of like energetic ceilings have been released um, and it's like different types of, I almost want to, I could call them seals. I could call them ceilings. I could call them rules or protections. Um, but it's like different types of energies. I'll just call them that to be as general as possible. And then you can fit this into your, your reality, right? Different types of energies that were kind of limiting us to, they were like limiting our choices. They were limiting, li limiting our choices, not necessarily in a bad way. Sometimes limiting our choices is actually to protect us, right? Especially when we were, we have been in such dark, dense energy, um, limiting our choices, limiting our options was actually protecting us, even if we didn't like it, even if it felt restrictive, but because it, it could have um, prevented people from making like really, <laughs> you know, really bad choices, if I could use that word, right? Um, the, the, like, like there were certain choices that it was just preventing us from making for our own protection, right? But at the same time, it was also kind of keeping us restricted, keeping a lid on us and really stopping us from growing. So it was kind of a double-edged sword, right? Um, it, it was like protecting us on one side, but also restricting us on another. But now these, these energies that were doing that, that were both protecting and restricting us, they are lifted. They are lifted. They are gone. And that means that it's the Seven of Cups again. And this Two of Swords again. It's really having to take a higher level of responsibility for navigating your own consciousness, for navigating your own thoughts, feelings, and emotional reactions because now those the restriction is gone. That also means at a certain level that the protection is gone. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's it's really so much of you know, you turn 18, you graduate high school, you move out of your parents' house, and now it's like the restriction of your parents is gone, but also their protection is gone, right? Now you got to pay your own rent, right? Now you got to figure out how to do your own grocery shopping. It's it's that type of protection that has been lifted, right? That type of protection. It's like, you, you don't need it anymore. You've outgrown it. You're an adult now. So this is the same thing kind of happening on a soul level. You don't need these protections and restrictions. I, I, I don't know what a word would be. What would be a word that could I could use to describe something that is protect uh, that uh, that is also a source of protection but is also a restriction i don't know what that is besides like parent right that's like a parent so anyway the, this parent energy has been lifted and now the world is open to you and so it's like you're you're an adult now <laughs> on this level of your consciousness you're a higher level spiritual being you 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 are more radiating with your own soul and that means you could um steer yourself into shadow right you could take a shadow path that is available to you but it's like you're not going to do that right you're not going to do that just like when you graduated high school and moved out of your parents house you didn't like completely destroy your life no you successfully navigated your life right you got the rent paid you got your shit together you became an adult and here you are right it's like still doing it that doesn't mean that everything is always perfect and easy and that there aren't challenges right but you're handling it you got this right you're confident in your ability to be an adult this is what this is like on a soul level so that's why there's this emphasis on, um, it's, you know, just like when you become an adult, 
you you have to like learn to just kind of trust yourself and trust your own ability to, to navigate your life that's why there's this emphasis now on like soul obedience because it's like you just have to trust your own soul right you have to trust your own soul to just do whatever it is that you need to do to navigate your life and to steer in whatever direction you want to go in right you can go left or right you can go shadow or light you can go right in between and find the middle way and find the balanced path you can go one and then the other you can swerve you can do there's no right or wrong there is no there is no map there is there isn't even really a path although we each we all make paths right when somebody walks and makes a path then you can follow like you one of your fellow soul family right you can follow the path somebody else made for a little while and then you can branch off so we make paths for each other we help each other this is the the three of pentacles right this is this this is this teamwork and this is how we are all like energetically connected in in what i'm calling the starseed network we're all leaving paths and trails for each other and you can choose to follow someone else's path for a little bit if that's useful to you and then you just diverge and then you make your own trail and someone comes along and follows your trail for a little bit and then we all just keep weaving this incredible network all together um but at the end, end of the day it's your soul that guides you to follow the path of another and then your soul that guides you to strike out on your own path and then your soul that guides you to leave a trail for someone else and then it's just this continuing weaving right this continuing weaving um and it's <sighs> just i i, I just want to like just feel the freshness right feel the freshness it's like you're um, standing on a green, like an alpine meadow, if you've ever been in an alpine meadow, right? Just imagine an alpine meadow with all the alpine wildflowers out in front of you. And it's so fresh. The air is so fresh and so pure and so clean and so beautiful. You don't know what's out there. You're up in a high alpine meadow. You're up in the mountains. You don't know what's out there, but the, the, the meadow in front of you is so beautiful. You just walk out into it. And you breathe the air because it is so fresh and so clean. And breathing the air of this alpine meadow is like a reason to be alive because it is so delicious and it is so quiet and peaceful and serene and there are eagles circling overhead and it is so beautiful it almost moves you to tears right and you just take one step out into the meadow because it is so beautiful and you cannot help it and it is perfect and it is perfect and you just there there is no steps there is no trail in front of you there is no procedure there is no sequence there there is nothing just your own exploration of the path in front of you deciding just deciding what you prefer to do in every moment in the beauty of this world, right? In the beauty of this world. And I'm going to just leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.